Hello! Uh, I wanted to play a World War II game and put it on the channel, uh, so I decided on trying to play World in Flames. I have never played World in Flames before, so I thought it would be an interesting experiment to try to learn the game as I go and post the results onto the channel. Um, like I said, I've never played before. The, the rule book and the campaign book suggest a few different scenarios for, for those that have never played before, um, sort of just to, to get into the game, get their feet wet. Uh, one of which is the European campaign. Uh, that would be the, the smart thing to do. Uh, so obviously I decided not to do that, and instead play the entirety of the 1939 Global War scenario. Uh, it's not like my 40k table is currently getting any other use with the COVID lockdown, so I decided to just set up the entire map here on the board and give it a go. Uh, just a few things before we get started. It's very possible that I might mispronounce something like a city, or a country, or a territory, or an HQ, or really just about anything. If so, I apologize in advance. Um, uh, I've never, like I said, I've never played the game, uh, but I have read the rulebook several times, which is good because it is a lengthy rulebook. Um, so it's, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of rules there. It's very possible that I may have forgotten something as I go. Um, so please let me know in the comments below if there's some rule that I'm either messing up or, or misinterpreting or just forgetting. It's very possible. I haven't looked up any strategy videos ahead of time, so it's very possible that I may be making some suboptimal decisions as I play, just because I've never played before. So I'm, I'm really hoping to learn as I go with strategy as well. And hopefully if I make a mistake on that, um, doing that, then I'll learn and be able to correct as I go. I'm not planning on showing everything. I'm going to try to show a few things in between here and there. Maybe some key decisions I make, some key battles um, to show those. But I'm, I'm going to try to keep it a little bit higher level. If you're interested in something, um, the, if you're interested in a video that, that shows like every action taken, every detail, Stephen Dolges right now is doing a series on World and Flames as well. He's doing um, the European campaign. Um, and I'll put a link in, my, in the description below to that. It's a very good series, and I recommend you take a, a look at that as well. Um, I'm playing with about a third to a half of the optional rules, and I will post which ones I'm playing in the description below as well. Um, and when I get to set up here in a little bit, I'll, I'll talk about what ones, uh, some, some of the key ones that I'm playing with as well. So with that, uh, I'll move to how I set the board up. Um, I've got the force pools here on kind of the outside. I've got Italy, Germany, United Kingdom, and U.S. over here on the side. I didn't have quite enough room to put the America map where it should be, which would be right about here. So instead, it's kind of sitting up there uh, on the top of the board. I've got the production and turn track up there, and uh, the other four countries' force pools, China, USSR, Japan, and France, are over here. Uh, and then the naval display is over there as well. I sort of just put the, uh, other than I think maybe Japan's and the United States to some extent, um, and it looks like I guess maybe the Commonwealth as well. Other than those, I've sort of just dumped them all there. I will organize them as I go and, and as they get into war. But taking a look at the board, I've really just kind of put the units out where I thought best. The campaign guide gives you a um, uh, description on where units should be based on like what map they should be on but other than that you kind of have free reign as to where they go um, and the units that you pull are sometimes are random depends on the units some of the headquarters and boats are, are prescribed but other units are um, pulled randomly from a pool um, so some of the optional rules i'm playing with are ones that added um, more planes and more boats so i'm playing with planes and flames i'm playing with ships and flames i'm playing with uh, cruisers in flames, and I'm playing with the um, carrier vessel planes as well, uh, because I just thought it would be neat to have all those options in here, but I am not playing with divisions in flames. It seems like it changes the game. I, I could be totally wrong on this, but it seems like it might change the game um, more so than the inclusion of the ships and the planes, and I wanted to see how the game played without the divisions first before I move into that. Um, I am playing with territorials. I am playing with the city-based volunteers, um, playing with the the banner guards and the Siberian troops. Um, I'm playing with the saved oil and oil in general. And, and like I said, I'll post the the full list of the optional rules in the description. The other thing I've done is went ahead and 
made like a baseline of each of the country's resources, oil and build point and factory uh, totals. And so this will mostly be off camera, but just so you know, this is something I've, I've got kind of going off to the side here. So basically the first column are the number of factories that country has available to them. The resources, the next column there, um, the first number is the number getting to the factories. The second number is how many uh, resources are in that country right now. Not how many are being received, or not how many are being like um, transported to the factories, but just how many how many resources there are uh, in the territory. And then the like for Japan there, the plus two implies that they're getting two from trades. So the way to read that would be Japan is getting a total of 12 resources to their factories. They have 10 right now in their country and are receiving two from trades. Same with oil, and then the build points already has the production multiple applied. Um, and so that means Japan's getting 11 build points the first turn, um, but they that's after they're giving one away uh, to USA for the trade that they have. So the way the rules work, uh, each country on the same side, so right now this, this impulse is an axis impulse, so each country, Japan, Italy, and Germany would do all of their naval movement together, all of their land movement together, etc. But for just ease of, of being able to do this on my own, I'm planning on doing it country by country unless something has to be done in parallel together. Um, so, like, I'm going to be doing all of Germany's actions first, and then I'll move to the other two. So, uh, having said that, uh, it is the first impulse, it is the Axis impulse, uh, it is 1939, and it is September, uh, September, October of 1939, and we're going to begin the game. Uh, so, like I said, it's Germany's turn. They will declare war on Poland. That is something that they must do per the, the scenario rules. Uh, I am playing with oil. And I've already uh, removed one of their stored oil here uh, down, to, down to five total, uh, as they will be doing a land impulse. Uh, and I'll be back with uh, Poland setup. With choosing a land action, Germany gets to do four air missions, uh, and I think I'll do four ground strike missions. Um, uh, again, I don't know if that's the right call here or not, but because the, the Polish Air Force is surprised, they won't be able to respond to this. So I'm just going to go ahead and do, um, I'm going to use uh, a lot of these airplanes now for that, that purpose. So I'm going to move this one here. This one is going to go here. And then these two will attack here. None of them, I didn't put any of them in range of Warsaw. That was probably a mistake on my part. Um, but we'll, we'll see what we can do with these three here. Okay, I'm going to try to roll dice on camera. That might be a little difficult, and I'll just call out what it is if, if for some reason it doesn't show up. Uh, but we'll start here with this one. Um, it is in a forested hex, so I only get half of that combat value, so that'll round to three, or the, the, ground, or the ground bombardment. I forget the name of it, but that stat. Um, it'll round down to three, uh, but I do get two dice because they are surprised. There's only one unit there, so we'll roll two dice, and I get a one and a four, so that will flip over this unit here. All right, next we will move to this stack here. There are two units uh, set up in that city, and I've got two different bombers attacking it. Uh, so the first one, I will do uh, this plane here, uh, with the three factor um, against the top unit, uh, and neither of those gets a hit, so I will go to the second unit underneath, uh, but that one does flip over, so I'll flip that over in a minute, and then this plane here will try to attack the top uh, unit, and it does not work, and I need to be more careful with where I'm rolling dice, so the bottom one here will flip over. And lastly, uh, this unit here uh, just sent one plane in, so roll the dice, and I did get a one, uh, so that will successfully flip this over. And with that, I'll move on to the land movement phase. So this is what it looks like after movement. I didn't see any rules in, um, in the book that state that a flipped over unit loses their zone of control, so I may be wrong about that, but I did treat that as having a zone of control. Uh, and I'm playing the rule, I forget if I am or, or am not playing the optional rule, but uh, minor countries do have their zones of control uh, even when they're surprised. Um, so the first battle I'll do is uh, this one here. These two stacks of units will attack into this spot. Um, and the, uh, the odds on that, um, 
I am doing fractional odds. I'm doing the 2d10 combat table. Uh, and the modifier for that combat there with uh, attacking with armor into a clear hex and having a flipped over unit and all of the numbers. The modifier comes out to be plus 21. So on the blitz table, that, that will be the maximum result regardless. So I, I won't even bother rolling for that. Uh, which means this unit will be removed. None of my units will flip over. And I can move forward um, with, with units into here. Okay, the next combat will be this one. I'm having everything here attack into into the here. Uh, so this unit, these two, and these two will attack here. The modifier for that is plus 22.6. Uh, there's a city there, so I can't do the blitz table, but even with the assault table, that's, uh, that's at the top uh, row, which means that this unit will be removed, and... Um, they, uh, nothing will have to flip over because it's at the top result of the combat chart. And the last combat will be here. I'm going to attack with the two here, the two here, and the two here. For combat factors, it's 37 to 8. Uh, there are two factories here in this location, uh, which is a minus 2 modifier, but there's a flipped over unit. So it's plus 2, so that cancels out. So the, the odds are 9.2 or the, the modifier, I should say. So on a 1 or a 2, it'll move up to a 10. Nope. So the, the modifier is only a 9. Uh, and so let's roll. All right, so get a uh, 14. So 14 plus 9 is 23. So uh, 23 is the maximum result on this table. So both of these are destroyed. Uh, nothing flips over, and I can go ahead and move some units in here. Okay, so that's it for the German part of this impulse. Uh, Warsaw is still here. They have all of their troops. None of them are flipped over. Uh, and on the next impulse, the um, Polish Air Force will be able to try to do some damage to the invasion force here. Um, so from uh, for the German army, their goal during their next turn, or their next impulse, will be to try to take Poland, uh, at which point uh, Poland will be conquered, uh, and, and we'll go from there. Okay, next up is Italy. Italy has chosen a combined action because they are not an active major power, so they can only choose combined or pass. But really, they don't have anything to do at this point. They're not going to be... They, they can't declare war. Uh, they would have already had to declare war in the declare war phase, uh, step of this phase. Um, and, and they did not do that, nor could they. And they don't really have anything to do at the moment. Um, I'm going to try to figure out how to get them involved going forward. I think they're probably going to focus on like a, a North African campaign primarily, um, but they'll need to be able to defend against France in, in the south of France. Um, but, but I think Africa is where they're mostly going to be headed. Uh, they do also have some troops over in eastern Africa, and I'll come over here and show that. So they do have a few troops here in eastern Africa um, that we'll see if that can... Uh, be something that they end up taking advantage of. There are some routes to get over to Sudan and Egypt from that direction, though supply may be difficult. Um, so we'll see when we get there, but, but I don't think that's yet. The last country to go for this impulse is Japan. Uh, I'm not quite as sure what to do with Japan here in this situation, um, so what I'm going to do is a combined action. So Japan on a combined action it gets to do four air missions, two naval moves, a rail move, three land moves, and an attack. So I'm going to try to, to maximize all of that. Uh, so the first thing I'll do, so these transports right here are actually in this port here in Tuk or in Nagoya. Uh, so I'm going to embark these two units. I'm going to do a naval move with the two transports over here. Uh, here, uh, And that'll bring these units with them. Uh, the next thing will be ground strikes. So when I set this map up, um, I had for, I hadn't really thought about the fact that the Pacific hexes are actually two hexes each when it comes to distance. Um, so I can't do as much with some of the fighters here uh, as I thought I would be able to, but that's all right. We're just going to learn from our mistake and try to try to be better next time. Uh, but these two bombers are in range of a hex that I want to get them to. They have a range of six, so they're going to go um, to here, and this one's going to follow along. China's only got the one airplane right here. It's a range of five. On an intercept mission, it would be two and a half, which doesn't have enough range to get to this hex, but I might end up using this plane on some type of uh, ground support mission on China's turn. 
so I'll, I'll leave that here. I'm not going to bring the fighters along with me because this is out of range, so these bombers will be safe to get through. So unlike the situation with Germany and Poland, China is not surprised right now. They've been at war here with Japan for a few turns before the game started. Uh, so I don't get two dice, I only get one dice per plane. Um, so there are two units there from China, and there are two planes, each with a um, tactical factor of two. Let's just confirm that. Yep, they both have a two. So for the um, for the top Chinese unit, um, I'll just roll both dice here uh, since there are two planes, um, but this is for both planes, not just one. So they need a two or lower, and I got a ten. Let's see if I can get this on camera, and a six, so nothing there. And then for the second plane, I got a 2 and an 8. So the, the bottom unit there will be flipped over, but not the top unit. All right, I went ahead and flipped over the bottom unit here. Uh, I should also mention, I think everything here is in supply with the exception of this unit here. I've got an HQ here, and, and this HQ was not here at, the, at that point. Uh, this HQ here should be able to get supply from this rail back from Japan. I am playing with limited overseas uh, supply, so I do have appropriate ships both here in the Sea of Japan and the China Sea. Uh, so I'm getting supply through the port to this HQ, but all of these units here should either be on the coast getting supply or within two units of this HQ here, uh, with the exception of him. He is out of supply, but that's okay for now. Uh, and I think everything up here is likewise in supply from the town of Harbin. All right, next up are rail moves. I can do one rail move. I'm going to rail move this HQ unit here. He's going to rail over to here and he'll flip over because that's what happens after a rail move. Okay, next up are land moves. I realize I actually made a mistake. I'm just going to correct it because I'm playing against myself and I approve. But uh, these two transports were supposed to go up here uh, and drop off their passengers here. Uh, and then I'm going to do a land move. So I'm going to do three land moves. I'm going to move him here. I'm going to move him here. And I was planning on moving this unit just over one. So those are the three land moves that I get uh, on a combined action. Uh, and then the last thing I'll be doing is a little bit of a risky combat, but I'm going to attempt to attack this hex here. Uh, it's got the one flipped over unit from the ground strike previously done, and I'm going to attack with all of the surrounding units. All of them except for him are attacking across a river. Uh, and I am planning on doing HQ support with this uh, uh, the the factor of three here, which will be one and a half. Um, you divide it by two if you're using the two d ten table. So I'm doing it, it'll provide an extra one and a half bonus there. So with those odds, uh, the combat odds I already took a look at. It's going to be seventeen to nine. Uh, I've got seventeen, and that's that's having all of the units except for that eight to three. Uh, and on the defender side, it's nine. Uh, I'm adding one and a half for the HQ units, uh, HQ support, and I'm also adding two because one of them is a flipped over unit in that square, in a hex. The modifier ends up being 7.2, so I'll roll the dice here to see if I end up getting that up to 8. Nope, I rolled a 9, so it stays at a modifier of 7. So I'll roll the two dice, and I get a 10 on the dice. Uh, plus the 7 is 17, and I'll take a look at the chart to see what that gives me. So that result is 1 and 1. It's not fantastic, uh, but it, it was a bit of a risky attempt anyway. Uh, so I think China is going to take the unit that was flipped over. I think that was a 4. Yeah, it was a 4-2, so they'll leave the 5-3. And Japan will take this 2-2 two, two that was sitting underneath the 5-2. So it's a bit of a stalemate, um, but... Uh, I'm not sure who that benefits more at the moment, but we'll see how that ends up turning out in future turns. Because the Chinese unit was, um, the, they lost the Chinese unit within Chinese home territory, I believe that goes to the cadre pool, so that's going to provide them with an extra build point uh, next turn as well. The last thing I needed to do was to flip over all of the units involved in that combat because of uh, the 17 that I ended up rolling, uh, all of those units flip face over. So the last thing to do would be to reorganize. Um, I do have the HQ there that came in from Japan. I think I'm going to wait, though, to reorganize, possibly at a later time, maybe after I do a land action. Because I chose a combined action, it would cost two reorg points to reorganize anything. Um, so I may wait till I get him in a better position um, 
and, and reorganize on a land action in the future. Uh, so this is going to be a pretty slow, uh, it's a pretty slow push, I think, for both sides here. So I, I think I'm okay with the results of this. Um, and with that, that is the end of the Japanese uh, part of this impulse. One other thing to mention, I am playing with oil, um, and I did a combined action which would normally take uh, seven tenths of an oil, but I only moved six oil dependent units, uh, and you get the first one for free, so I took away five tenths of an oil. Or I took away one oil from Japan and then added five tenths to the, to the markers track. Uh, and so that is the end of the impulse. Uh, I won't roll um, to see if the the turn ends because it's an NA at this point. We haven't had enough impulses. The allies are guaranteed to have their next impulse. And that's what we'll, that's what we'll move to next. On to the allied impulse. Uh, first up will be Commonwealth. They're going to do a combined action uh, for their two naval moves. The first one they're going to do is... Um, well, I should say, before I even do this, the first thing that the allies have to do, um, the Commonwealth and France need to declare war on Germany. Um, so they've done that, so they are now active powers. So uh, their first naval move is going to be this stack of three transports sitting in London. They're going to move out to the two box. They have enough range and movement allowance to do that. And then the other uh, naval move they're going to do is move Force H, which is basically the entirety of the, the fleet based in the Uni United Kingdom. Uh, they're going to move to the two box as well of the North Sea. And all of the ships in that fleet have both the range and the movement allowance to do that. Next, I'm going to embark. I'm going to embark uh, the HQ, the 7 6 unit. They're both in London right now. And also the 5 5 in Dover. They're going to go out to the three transports that are currently in the North Sea. And lastly, I'm going to have them debark. So in order to maintain the correct um, foreign troop commitment, I'm going to put the HQ out first. He's going to go to uh, Calais, I think it is. Uh, the 7-6 will go there, and then the 5-5 five five will go to this other French port that I'm not going to try to pronounce. So they're now here in France. Uh, I think So I haven't really talked about my overall strategy yet, and I'll get to that. The general plan that I'm going to go with for the Commonwealth is to try to defend France as best as possible. Um, from the little I've seen from the, the videos that I've watched, um, it seems like the two strategies might be either to abandon France and just save um, the Commonwealth's resources for itself and, and the future war, or to try to mount a defense in France. And I think I'm going to try to go to the, the French defense route here. I'm going to try to hold off Germany for as long as possible. Um, so I'm going to move these three units over. Uh, that does mean that all the transports here flip over, like that. As part of the Commonwealth action, Pol uh, Poland aligned with the Commonwealth, uh, so they're going to use one of their air moves to move this um, bomber unit over here uh, and go here. Uh, there's no uh, intercepting aircraft anywhere in range, um, so I think the idea here... Oh, uh, I'm sorry, that's not the right spot. They're going to go here. That's where the HQ is at. They're going to go here and just try to do what they can to flip over, really hopefully, the HQ, um, but anything would be helpful. It's got a tactical factor of 2, uh, so for the top unit, I need a 1 or a 2, 4, uh, nope, and then for the HQ, a 6. All right, so nothing happened there, but I think it was worth trying. I think that's going to be more important than the two com That could have been more important than the two combat factors that it would have provided for the upcoming battle. Next up is France, also doing a combined move, a combined action, uh, and they're going to do much the same that the Commonwealth just did. They're going to move their one transport here into the, uh, I guess they can go to the three box. Uh, I don't think it matters too much for what I'm doing here. They're going to take the Moroccan unit here in Algeria and basically transport it over here, uh, and we'll go to here, and that'll flip this over. So that was the... Um, uh, the naval move, that was an embarkation, uh, and then the debarkation counts as a land move, and I've got two other land moves and a combined action. So I'm just going to move some units over here. I'm just going to try to spread out this defense a little bit. Uh, I think I'm going to leave the 4-1 here in the... I think I'll turn... Uh, no, you know what, I'm going to leave the 5-3 there. I'm going to leave the 5-3 here, I'm going to move the 4-1 here, and I'm going to move the 4-3 here. Just to sort of spread the defense out a little bit along the line. Um, 
obviously I'm expecting <laughs> I'm, I'm expecting it because I'll be playing them here shortly, but I'm also expecting, based on history, uh, for Germany to go through Netherlands and the Belgium, uh, the Netherlands and Belgium. Uh, so I'm thinking that I need to reinforce this front here as best as possible with both the, the Commonwealth and the French troops. The USA is going to pass. Moving over to the USSR, they're doing a combined action, and they, they either have to do that or pass because they are not currently at war. The only thing they're going to do is move this cavalry unit over here into eastern Poland. And with that, uh, USSR has now basically conquered eastern Poland, so their line is now uh, this border here. And this is a U.S. entry action check. So with the USSR entering eastern Poland, the entry check is uh, minus 7, which basically means on a 1 to a 7, um, I need to remove a U.S. entry check. And that is it for the USSR this turn. Really, with the Allies, I'm sort of just getting things into position uh, and, and trying to reinforce what I can. The situation over in China is probably the one I was least sure about. Um, so I, I'm not really sure the best way to go about playing China right now. It seems like they really need to just try to hold the line as best as possible and, and make Japan work as hard as they can to get any kind of gains. Uh, so they'll be doing a combined action. Uh, I, I took a look before I started recording this video. There's really nothing I think I want to attack here. Um, down here, Japan is pretty thin with troops, uh, but with um, with the nationalist Chinese attack uh, but modifier of basically half um, and a whole lot of rivers and straits down here, there's really nothing... It's, it, they're pretty risky battles either way. If I were to loot, there there are a good number of combat results that could end up um, resulting in a lot of uh, losses for the attackers, and I think that would be devastating because then Japan would be much more easily able to move into southern China. So I think I'm going to hold here and rely on defense, uh, and that's basically the case along the line as well, but I am going to move this 4-3 unit up to the 5-3. Um, because uh, we lost a unit here last turn from the Japanese attack. And I'm also going to rebase this plane to here, um, just to provide a little bit more air coverage in case this, um, this region gets attacked again, like it did last time. And that is the end of the Allied Impulse. So I'll do the, um, the end of Impulse things here shortly, and it'll be back to the Axis. Okay. We'll move to the Axis Impulse because it's now, uh, there's been two impulses, we're moving to the third one, it's time to roll for weather. I've got a D12 here, um, basically that's what's tracking what the previous weather rolled was, and that's important uh, because there might be a modifier to this dice roll. Um, however, it is uh, September, October, and the last roll was a four, so there are no modifiers to this, uh, but I did roll a nine. So a 9 in September, October uh, is storms in the Arctic. We've got rain in the northern temperate and Mediterranean, storms in the northern monsoon, and fair weather uh, elsewhere in the south. Um, so, and um, possibly, I don't know, but more importantly, but another thing to keep in mind is that each time an impulse is done, we're going to move two along the impulse track instead of just one now. So this is, a, uh, this is probably going to slow things down quite a bit uh, for Germany and uh, Japan as well. So we'll see how that uh, plays out. The weather right now uh, in the region that we're in in Poland is rainy. Uh, just across this blue border here into the Arctic region, it's actually storm, so it's even worse. Um, so it's, it's going to be a little bit of tough going, but I think the Germans still need to advance um, forward. Uh, and really, they just have the one objective to take now, which is Warsaw. So I'm going to move the units here. Uh, they're going to be doing a land action um, and just moving all the units they need to to surround Warsaw. Uh, and that'll probably be all that Germany does this turn. I've moved the German troops into position here. Uh, three of them are attacking across a river. Uh, or three of the stacks, I should say. So here, here, and here are across a river. Uh, so the total combat, um, the ratio there is 60 for Germany and 9 for the defenders, uh, Poland. Um, and that, that's, that's taking the uh, river into account. The other modifiers we have going on right now are the rain. Um, so it, I'm not exactly sure how to interpret this in the rule book. 
and it, um, if I'm doing this wrong, uh, please correct me in the comments below. Um, but for the um, the weather effects, the rulebook has you modify the odds level based on weather, uh, and then it goes on to talk about the dice roll modifier and how they're changed if you're doing the 2d10 combat. But the 2d10 combat chart has weather modifiers on it, whereas the 1d10 chart does not. Um, so I think that the modifiers in the 2d10 chart are all I need to apply. If I'm doing that incorrectly, let me know. I don't think I need to modify the odds level based on rain and then apply the rain modifier, uh, but, but if I'm doing that wrong, let me know. Uh, but what uh, the modifiers we do have here, we've got minus one for the factory in Warsaw, we've got minus two for the rain, and both sides will be doing HQ support. So the Germans have uh, four, and uh, the Polish HQ down there has two. Uh, so you have both of those, so the, the delta there is one in favor of the Germans, which means the total multiplier here is minus two. Uh, and that gives an odds modifier of 11.3. So I'm going to roll uh, on a 1 through 3. It'll go up to 12, 6, nope. So it'll be an odds modifier of 11. Or a dice roll modifier, I should say. Uh, and then it's in a city, so it won't be the blitz table. It'll be the assault table. And we've rolled an 8. 8. Plus 11 is 19. Okay, for a 19, quite a bit happens here. So the attackers lose one plus an extra one if I'm attacking a city, which I am. So the attackers will lose two units, the defenders will t lose two units, and half of the remaining attacking land units stay face up. Uh, and I need to check the rules. I'm pretty sure those two airplanes there are just destroyed uh, once... Um, the land units are destroyed and the, the land units move in from Germany, but I will check that in a moment. So as a result of the combat, um, two Polish land units were destroyed. That is, uh, these two here were destroyed. Um, any face-down aircraft are destroyed, this one here. Uh, but then as a result of being conquered, which Poland now is because all of the factories are controlled by Germany, the other airplane is now also destroyed. The ships here um, are treated as though they are overrun, uh, which would mean that they roll and have a chance to either escape or are destroyed or become controlled by the new conquering power. Um, but the option to escape is not possible because there are no friendly ports here that they can go to um, on the Baltic Sea. Uh, I see that that's a little off camera, but there's, there's nowhere for them to go in the Baltic Sea. Um, they can't go over to the USSR because the... Um, they, don't, they would not be able to meet the foreign troop limits. There might be other reasons as well, but I think that reason alone is enough reason for them not to be able to go. And they can't go from the Baltic Sea to the North Sea, um, but on a one for each of those ships, the Germans could take it over. So I'll go ahead and roll that. Uh, so for the, um, the convoy points, that's a two, no. Uh, for the top naval unit there, an eight. And the other one is a two. So uh, none of those ships become German, and all of them are destroyed. Uh, these two are also destroyed as a result of the combat for the Germans. Um, I flipped over, so I think I'm doing this legitimately. Um, the HQ that provided the HQ support gets flipped over, and then the combat results, or I'm sorry, the other way around. The combat results are um, done first. So I flipped over half of the remaining units, which was five of them, and then it says to do the HQ supply, or if the HQ... Um, flip over the HQ that did HQ support. But I chose the HQ as one of the five to flip over, so I think that's legitimate. So I've got five face-up units still here for Germany. And I believe that is it for the German turn. Um, I probably could have started moving these over to the west had I been thinking ahead, but I was not. Uh, so I think that's going to be it for Germany. I moved six units that are oil dependent, so I will take away five-tenths of an oil for that. So I'm not sure where at in the video yet I'm going to be putting this clip. Um, I'm taping this at the end of the first turn, but I may be putting it earlier in the video. It just depends on where it seems like it fits the best. But I want to talk about reserves for a minute. Um, as I was going through the game, I realized I had messed up reserves several times, um, especially reserves as they relate to minor countries. 
So the way that the rules work um, is that when you are at war with a major country, your reserves can be called out. At the beginning of the game, before the game even starts, every country's reserve units should go into the reserve pool over by the construction tracker, um, and then you can call them out on your turn, when, or when you have the initiative, your country can call them out and they come out face down. Um, so, for example, in the game here, um, when Germany declares war on Poland in the first impulse, on the second impulse, which is the Allies' first impulse, Poland um, could call out their reserve units and put them on the board face down. Um, so after a few impulses, I realized I had messed up the reserves for Poland, um, but I thought that they were supposed to have come out right when Germany declared war on Poland, uh, which is not the case. So I just sort of didn't bother with the reserves for Poland at that point. But really, they're not supposed to come out until Poland's impulse. And uh, looking back at the video, I realized there probably was a spot next to Warsaw where one of the reserves could have come out. Uh, so I didn't do that because I didn't realize that... I, I thought I had already missed my opportunity to do that at that point. Um, and I had forgotten to do reserves with the other major countries, France and the Commonwealth as well. Um, so the point of this is that I, I'm leaving this all in here uh, as hopefully this might be a bit of a teachable moment for somebody else if, if somebody else is confused about the way reserves work. Basically, you start the game with reserves on the reserve pool, and when your country goes to war with a major power, um, then you get to pull the reserves off of that on your impulse and put them onto the board face down. And if I'm misinterpreting that, let me know in the comments below, but I, that, that's the way that I'm reading this to work. Um, they don't come out right when war is declared if it's not your impulse. And you don't have to bring them out, you can leave them on the pool. So, uh, like I said, I don't know where in the video that I'm going to put this in, but just a note on reserves. I had messed it up at the beginning of the game. I think I now know how to correctly play them, which I'll do moving forward. But I'm leaving it in here just to... Um, maybe help somebody else who might be confused about the rule. And then lastly, during the German impulse, uh, I did set up their reserve units. Um, the units that needed to be placed in specific cities I put there. Otherwise, they mostly reinf uh, not reinforced, but they, they started putting units up against the uh, border with the Netherlands and Belgium here. And a few of them were also added down here uh, along the border with France. Japan's situation is a little difficult uh, because of the weather right now in the area. The north monsoon zone has storms and the north temperate zone has rain. So uh, the plan before the weather, um, or at least the plan I was, I was thinking about doing was taking the marine units here over in Japan, just at the edge of the camera here, bringing them down uh, here and trying to push in from the south. But the storms are going to make that very difficult. So I think I'm just going to prepare for um, a future turn and hope the weather gets good. Um, so to do that, I'm going to load the 4-4 Marine unit here. They're going to do a combined action. The 4-4 Marine unit is going to load into the transport. Uh, and they are going to go over here to this port. And they will be dropped off. And that will flip over. Uh, and then the only other thing I'm going to do is move this HQ here. Uh, this HQ is going to move, and the reason he's going to move is because right now this unit is out of supply due to the rain in the area. Um, and looking at it, these four units here would have decent odds, even across the river and into the mountains right now, uh, because he is an out of supply unit and he's flipped over. Uh, but if I move an HQ uh, either here or here, that will put him into supply. Uh, so I think he's going to move here because I do have an HQ. Yeah, there's an HQ under there. Uh, so this HQ is going to move here. Uh, that would normally take two, uh, yeah, two movement uh, points to, to get to that hex, but it is raining, so it's actually going to take four, which is more than I have. So he will flip over, which is a little unfortunate, but I think it's going to be important. He'll They'll still be able to trace supply through him, so I think that'll be important just to make sure that this stays in supply, which will make that um, much easier to defend 
and the Allies' next impulse. And with that, I think that's all Japan's going to do. I moved two units that are dependent upon oil, uh, so I will take away just one-tenth of an oil for Japan. Italy is going to do a combined action, but not do anything with it. It's rainy in the Mediterranean right now, and they still don't really have a lot to do. I'm waiting for some of their units to come in in November, December, and um, to, to start taking a look and seeing how I can do the North African push. Uh, but right now, they're not going to do anything except take a, um, an empty combined action. Moving on now to the Allied Impulse, but before I do that, one maybe rules question I'm not quite sure about. Um, so I'll, I'll tell you how I'm going to play it, but I'll tell you the question I've got. So um, Conquest doesn't actually happen until the end of the turn. So Germany has taken what it needs to to eventually conquer Poland, uh, but the actual Conquest itself doesn't happen until the end of the turn. This aircraft unit that was in Warsaw was face up at the time that the German units moved into Warsaw. Uh, when a minor country is conquered, the aircraft units are destroyed. But when a uh, hex is taken over with an aircraft on it that's face up and not surprised, it rebases. So technically, this airplane could rebase, I think, somewhere within Poland. Uh, I say within Poland because there's a rule for minor countries that they can't, um, air and land units can't leave a minor country if it doesn't already have half of its units. Half of its units need to stay within the minor country. But at the time, uh, there were some boats here, but they don't count for this as far as I understand. Uh, this was the only unit left, so it can't actually leave Poland. Um, if it were able to have left Poland, it made it, it might have been able to fly back to Commonwealth, but um, that's pretty far. So maybe, maybe it doesn't matter. This might be a moot point anyway. Uh, the point is, this plane was not technically destroyed at the time the German troops entered Warsaw, but it can't leave Poland, and by the time the end of the turn comes around, um, Poland will be conquered, and then the air unit will be destroyed. So I'm just going to remove this. I don't think there's anything it can do because after it rebases, it would turn upside, it would turn face down. Um, so for all practical intents and purposes, this plane is gone. Um, but just to I'm not exactly sure if I'm reading those rules exactly correct, so let me know if I'm doing something wrong there. Beginning the Allied Impulse here, we'll start with the USSR. They're going to claim Bessarabia in the um, declare war phase, and thinking about it and looking at it, I think Germany is just going to allow it, uh, as losing the rest of Romania would be too, uh, too dangerous for them to do with all the oil resources there. So... The Germany will allow the USSR claim to Bessarabia, uh, and because they are not at war, uh, the uh, USSR is not at war, they can only do a combined action, and it is raining, it's actually, oh, it's actually storming right now uh, in the area that I'm looking at, so they're just going to do a few land moves and a few aircraft rebasing, and I'll go ahead and do that. And this is what it looks like after the movement. I'm really not sure what to do with China at the moment. Um, it, I debated for a long time thinking about attacking uh, right here uh, because I don't know what better opportunity China is going to have to do that. Um, they've got quite a few troops there. Um, a lot of them have their full attack value. Um, the problem is the defender is in a mountain. It's raining. It's across a river. So I think what China is going to do, I think they're going to wait. To, the, so I looked at the, the impulse track. The Allies should have one more impulse, um, and it, the weather might clear up. If the weather clears up, I think that would be a better time to attack. The problem is it, it's high risk, high reward for that attack. It is possible that they take out the Japanese troop there and move in, and then they wouldn't have, um, you know, it'd be a, a hex that they could take and kind of even up the front there. Uh, but if they were to roll poorly, they could lose a lot of units there. And if they lose a lot of units, it, uh, Japan would just be able to push right through. So I think it's too risky to do at the moment, and we'll wait for the weather to become better. So with that, um, China will just do a combined action. I don't think there's anywhere that they want to move. They're really just holding the line. Um, I, I think they're in about as good a spot as they can be right now. The U.S. will also do a combined action, but um, will also not do anything at the moment. I've set up the Commonwealth and French 
reserve units. I think both are just going to do a land move, a land action at this point. Um, a lot of the transports, well actually all the transports for the Commonwealth are currently flipped over. And uh, eventually I need to try to reinforce, I think, some things in the Pacific, but it's a little early for that right now. Um, I think the main focus is just going to be trying to shore up the border here between France and Belgium. I moved a few of the Commonwealth units. I didn't actually end up moving any of the French units. Um, I don't want to move anything down here until things flip back over. Germany's probably not going to attack, but like if I move this 5-3 and only left a flipped over um, garrison here, I, I don't know. They, Germany probably wouldn't attack, but I don't want a chance that I know that I'm playing Germany. But I, I don't know what I would do in that situation. So I think France is just going to sit there. Um, I'm not going to do anything with the Air Force. I think they're in an okay position. There's really no point in trying to to hit anything over here. Germany's still got a lot of fighter power over here. And I think that's it for the Allied Impulse, then. They didn't really do a whole lot. They're just uh, waiting to weather the storm. Uh, it, it is literally raining and storm, storming right now. So I think they're just going to try to get in position, try to slow down Germany as much as possible, and um, we'll go from there. It's the end of the Allied Impulse, so it'll be Axis next. We're moving two because of the current weather. The current weather is nine, and because it's an, it's the Axis turn here, we'll roll for weather again. Oops. Okay, so that's an eight, um, but because I was at nine before, it's plus one, so it just stays at nine. So same stormy weather um, and rainy weather all across the map. At the start of the Axis Impulse is the Declare War phase, and a few things are going to happen this, this turn. Um, the USSR and Japan are going to enter a neutrality pact. Um, thinking about it and looking at it here, I don't think it really benefits either side right now to attack the other. Um, the USSR would rather have those Siberian troops, I think, out in the west. Um, and, and Japan's got their hands full right now with China. So I think both of them are going to be more than happy enough to free up the troops on that border right now and use them elsewhere. The other thing that needs to happen, uh, because the USSR demanded Bessarabia on this turn, Germany has to determine whether or not uh, Hungary and Bulgaria uh, take also claim parts of Romania, and they are going to accept that. Um, because I think Germany in their next turn are going to align Hungary and Bulgaria. Also during the Axis Declaration of War step, Japan is going to align with Siam and set those units up. Germany is going to choose a land action and rail as many units as they can over to the Western Front with the Netherlands and Belgium. Um, to do the rail move, they either have to be an HQ or be located at an HQ or be located at a city. So that'll limit my choices here, and that, that goes for both the um, origin and the destination. So I think the only things I can move are this HQ and this 7-4 who's on that HQ there. The other units that are on cities are all flipped over. The remaining units uh, will probably start moving east to start garrisoning the border with the USSR. The Italians are going to do a combined action. They're going to—they have three land, act, uh, three land moves and one naval move that they can do as part of a combined action. So they're going to move this stack of two transports out to the zero zone, uh, which is a little off camera, but they're just moving right off the coast to the Italian coast. Um, and then they're going to embark this five-five and this HQ unit, and these are now embarked. Uh, those don't count as land movements, uh, as it's part of embarkment. Uh, so with the three remaining land movements, I'm going to shift all of these units down here. I realized I didn't set these up very well uh, to begin with. I don't really need anything right here. Uh, it is These are mountain hexes, and it is raining right now in the, um, both of these zones. So this guy will flip over because it only has three movement points, but the other two should be fine. It's rainy and stormy over here in Asia as well, uh, so Japan is going to continue to not do a whole lot this turn. They're really looking for some good weather. Um, they are going to start moving some of these units over towards the Chinese front, but again, because it's raining, not much is going to be able to happen. Um, this unit will just move one, uh, try to get to that city um, so that they can do rail moves um, in a turn, uh, maybe next turn. Um, 
but right now they're just going to each move one spot and they're going to flip over because both of those spots are both of those hexes are greater than their movement allowance with that that's the end of the axis impulse so we are now at the point where um, uh, the turn could end so right now it could end on a one on a, on a dice roll got a four so it will continue to an allied impulse and we'll move forward two because of the weather the USSR is going to do a combined action. That's all they're allowed to do, either that or pass. Uh, but they're going to do a combined action. They're going to move some of these units here uh, over to the west, um, starting with this HQ. Uh, so this HQ is going to move to the west with the one rail move that they get. Um, and their first stop is going to be the border with Iran. Uh, and then um, later it'll be the front with Germany. Uh, one of the land moves, I'm going to move this unit down here just by one uh, hex. Eventually, this one's going to stay back to guard this city while these two are going to move to the west as well. And with the other four land moves I have, um, these units are just going to do some more repositioning. And here's what that looks like at the end of that. Uh, France and the Commonwealth are basically going to take empty uh, land actions or combined actions. A lot of the units are flipped over, over in Europe, so they can't move anywhere. The British units over on the border with Belgium don't want to go any further south into France in case they need to evacuate. So right now everything over there is just going to stay as is. The one thing I will do is a rail move with this unit, uh, and he's just going to move over to the border here, like so. Uh, and the U.S. is also going to just take an empty combined action. The reason they're taking combined or land actions and not passing is because um, China uh, wants to have an action with good weather before this turn is done. Um, so they're, they're hoping to get one more of those in. But as it currently stands with the weather, China is also going to take an empty land action as well. That is the end of the Allied Impulse, so we'll roll another dice to see if the turn ends. This time on a 3 or less, the turn will end. It is a 6, so we will move on to the Axis turn. So this moves over here to the Axis, um, and then the Axis will need to roll for weather. So here we go. Rolled a two, and that's going to be plus one because it was previously a nine, so it, it adds one, uh, so it's a three. And a three is fair weather everywhere. During the declaration of war step, Germany is going to align Hungary, and that is a U.S. entry check. You get a six, so no U.S. chip for that. And here I've set Hungary's units up. I will add the rest of their units to Germany's force pool. Starting with Japan this time, the weather has cleared up over here, so they're going to be able to do what they have been wanting to do. Um, so we'll do some naval moves. This marine unit is going to load into this amphibious unit, and they're going to move out here to the three area of the China Sea. And also the strike fleet is moving here, and it's full of battleships. And um, the only other thing that they're going to do is to do an invasion. And they're going to go right here into this hex with the 3-2. So the way invasions work um, is there will be a notional unit in addition to that 3-2 there. And you get uh, one point base for the notional unit plus another one because it's um, uh, we're invading the home country of that notional unit. So the notional unit has a strength of 2, which means that there's a total defending strength of 5 in this hex. Uh, we are attacking with a 6, and these two units here are also going to be attacking, and they're, it, it doesn't look to me like there's any kind of river separating the two, so they're going to add another 8 combat factor there. And I've got uh, plenty of battleships in the strike group. Um, you can only use as many ships as you have units um, attacking. So I'm going to use three battleships. They each have a shore bombardment factor of three, uh, so they'll contribute an additional nine to the battle. So the attacking force has a strength of 23, the defending force has a strength of five, the notional unit is treated as being face down, so there's a modifier of plus two, so you do all that math, and the total combat modifier here is 11.2. So on a one or a two, it'll move to a 12. I got a 2, 
where's the camera? There we go. Camera is two. Uh, two. Uh, so this will be 12. Uh, we'll roll the two dice. And I get a 15. So 15 plus 12 is 27. I should have mentioned I'm rolling on the assault table because I don't have any mech units. But uh, 27 is off the chart. So both, or the, yeah, so both the notional and the defending unit here are destroyed. Uh, all of the attacking units get to remain face up, uh, so we'll move like that. Because that was a land combat in the home country, that unit gets added to China's cadre pool to be an extra build point. Uh, but this is going to be bad news here because now Japan has broken through on this front. And without reinforcements, these Chinese units here might be uh, in some danger. Germany is going to do a land action. Uh, this unit here and this unit here are, well, this unit's in a city and this unit is at an HQ. So they're both going to rail over to uh, Germany's western front. Lastly, this plane here will rebase over towards the western front as well. And that's where the German troops have ended up. And lastly, Italy's going to do a land action. Uh, they're just going to rearrange some of the troops that they have here in northern Africa. Uh, and then at the end of the turn, the transport that's got the two units in it are going to return to port here. So I need to make sure that there's room for those two troops. Um, so I'm just going to do a little shuffling around. The territorial is going to move here. The HQ is going to take its spot. And the land unit here in the port is going to move down here with the HQ. That's the end of the Axis Impulse, so we will roll a die to see if the turn ends. Okay, I rolled a 1, so that means the turn ends. Because the Axis had both the first and last impulse of the turn, the initiative marker moves one step towards the Allies. At this point, uh, we go through the end of turn stage, so I'm just going to step through the different actions to, uh, to clean up the end of the turn and move on to the next turn. The first thing are partisans, so we roll one dice for that, and I rolled a one. So for a one on the partisan roll, uh, the two countries that are of um, that, that we need to take a look at for partisans are India and Manjuko. So looking at India, it's got a partisan value of 5. There are 3 units, 3 land units in India from the Commonwealth. Um, so it'll be a plus 3 to whatever I roll on this die. So I'll roll a die. I rolled a 9. Plus the 3 is 12. That is greater than the partisan number of 5 in the country. Uh, so nothing happens. For Manchukuo, the partisan number there is 3, and I have 5 units in the country, so no matter what the dice roll is, uh, no partisans can appear there. So taking a look at the U.S. entry pool, both the German-Italian one is at 7, as is the Japanese one. The options I chose were the Selective Service Act and Embargo on Strategic Materials to Japan, neither of which added any tension to the tension pools. Uh, coming around here to the German-Soviet um, border, uh, the Germans added two uh, tokens as offensive tokens, and the Soviets added the one as defense. And then over here, uh, Japan added one uh, for defense as well. All across the board, um, any convoys or any other ships I had out to sea were moved back to their base, and everything was um, flipped over. Everything could trace a supply path of, of any length back to a uh, source of supply, so every unit was able to be flipped over. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I've been tracking number of factories and resources and oil as I go, so that I don't have to do it all at the end of each turn. Uh, basically, you, after the multiplier, the way it, um, it comes out is Japan has 12 build points, Germany has 18, Italy 5, the U.S. 11, China 4, France 5, the USSR 8, and the Commonwealth 11. France and Germany each will be storing one oil. And China got two extra build points from having two land units destroyed during land combat in China over here. 
uh, which will bring them up to six. On second thought, I don't think France is going to store that extra oil. It seems like it might not be worth it. I should also mention that the way that I've got the Commonwealth uh, convoys set up, um, I'll be storing some oil, uh, four oil in India and three in Canada. I didn't have enough convoys to bring it back to the United Kingdom, but at least they'll have a good amount to be stored um, outside of the United Kingdom. And now on to buying units. Uh, I ended up scrapping these two units here and removed them from their force pools, so I'll get rid of them. Um, for the axis up top there, um, I'm going to talk about this, I think, a little bit after I go through the production. Just kind of my general idea of where I need to go with each side, with each country. Um, but you'll notice here with Italy, I'm purchasing some naval units, um, an amphibious unit, and also a carrier. Japan uh, is also purchasing a carrier. These things take a while to build, so I'm, I'm just trying to get them in as early as possible. Uh, but Japan also needs some quick land units to get over to China. Uh, and these came from the construction pool, these three carriers here. So I'm going to finish building those. Germany is going to start building submarines. Uh, these are submarines that they're building, and this one was in the construction pool that I'll keep building. Uh, and just a few more land units as well. For the Allies, um, China, I just built whatever I could. That'll come out quickly. Uh, the militia will come out this turn, and if I'm not mistaken, yeah, the infantry will just take one extra turn. Um, so just trying to rush out some units to help hold the line. Um, France, I'm hoping, I'm thinking, can hold out for three more turns. So I, I built this HQ unit. It'll be out in three turns. Uh, that would be March, April of uh, 1940. It'll be able to come out. I hope they're still around at that point. Um, if not, there's really not a whole lot else they can build anyway, except some militia, um, which I'm planning on building next turn. But just figured if, if this has the opportunity to get out onto the board, that could be reasonably powerful. America is going to start building up their navy here. They, they're building a battleship. They're building a carrier, uh, an amphibious vehicle, uh, amphibious transport, um, some convoy points, and they're also building a garrison. Uh, the plan for the garrison is to start going out into the Pacific Islands and start garrisoning out there. Um, the Soviet Union uh, is building a tank and is also banking two build points for next turn. And then for the Commonwealth, I selected specifically the countries that you see here. Uh, Australia, India, Hong Kong, and Burma. Territorials for those. I think Burma uh, and Hong Kong just need to be reinforced with whatever I can reinforce out there. Um, I know they're only one strength units, but I think having any unit there is beneficial. Um, a lesson that I learned when I did the invasion with Japan into China there, was that had I not uh, been able to destroy both the unit that was sitting there and also the notional unit, the invasion unit would, um, would not have survived. So I think even if this unit here is only a strength of one, having it and a notional unit, um, if, if Hong Kong gets invaded, could be pretty powerful. I don't know if that's the right call or not, but um, just trying to get some more units out onto the, um, the Asia map. Uh, also building a carrier and with one point, um, a convoy point. So that is it for the um, 1939 September-October turn. Um, I think uh, I'm just going to quickly talk about each country, uh, the things that I think I'm going to do moving forward with each country, and the things I probably should have done during the first turn with each country. Um, so looking over here at the Europe map, um, just talking about the Commonwealth, I think their goal moving forward, and, and the way I've been doing the purchasing here, um, they need to reinforce their holdings out on the Asia map. Um, they need to possibly send some troops that are currently in the United Kingdom uh, to either Gibraltar or Northern Africa or out to the Asian map as well. Uh, and beyond that, I think they're just going to try to help France hold um, the line with Belgium as much as possible at the be um, as soon as that war breaks out. Um, and they've got a bit of air power stacked there in London, and um, I think Dover is there as well. Um, so hopefully that'll, that'll be able to help out as well. Um, they haven't really gotten 
much going on with their navy yet, uh, but I think that might just be due to the fact that I haven't done much with anybody's navy, um, which maybe that'll change in the next turn. France, there's really not a whole lot to say about France. They're they're guarding the line. They're going to try to also just guard the line with Belgium and uh, Germany as best they can. Um, obviously, the troops there in France are going to be outnumbered just by Germany's sheer production. But the longer they can hold out, the better it is for the Allies. So that that is their goal. And I think I mentioned in, a, in an earlier clip that I did not save an oil for France, but that's actually not true. I am going to save it because I think I can just convert it to an extra production point next turn, the way rounding works. Uh, because I've got 10 total resources, one of which is oil, coming into France. So, um, And right now the, pr the production multiplier for France is half. So... Um, if I don't use that oil right now, that's nine resources going to nine factories for four and a half build points, which is five. Um, but then next turn, I can have uh, ten resources plus a stored oil for eleven, uh, which will round up to six. That is the goal. That is the hope, at least. Um, moving on to Germany. Germany, uh, as you might have noticed in the production part of the video, is building a lot of submarines or U-boats. Um, I think they need to get a lot more involved in disrupting the Commonwealth shipping. I, I think that's going to be their goal. They're really not going to focus on their navy otherwise. Um, they do have some naval units there, I just don't think they're going to do a whole lot with them. Um, but uh, their their path forward here is pretty clear. They need to take the Low Countries and France. And then Italy over here is um, building a uh, naval unit. They're, they're building a carrier, they're building an amphibious transport. Their goal is to do whatever they can in Africa, and maybe eventually try to take Gibraltar. Um, we'll see. I don't know if that's going to happen or not. But they're building a carrier. They're, they're going to try to get naval supremacy in the Mediterranean. That is their goal. Uh, uh, the Soviet Union is really just trying to form up their defensive line for an eventual 1941 or 1942 invasion by Germany. I think uh, Germany is going to have their hands full with the their Western Front in 1940, uh, and and if they're ready to go for Barbarossa in 1941, I think they'll try to do that. Uh, and if not, they'll they'll go in 1942. I don't think Germany and Italy are probably going to be working together too much. I mean, obviously they're on the same side, but I think Italy's goal is south with the Mediterranean. And Germany's is east and west with France and the Soviet Union. And then over here on the Asian map, um, I talked about this a bit with the Commonwealth, but they're going to uh, reinforce what they can. They've got units coming into India, Burma, Hong Kong, and Australia. Um, they're they're not overly powerful units, but just they're they're trying to get a bit of a presence on the board to be able to, if nothing else, deter Japan from pushing too far to the the west. Um, Japan is just going to keep doing what they're doing. Uh, Japan is currently fighting against China along the line there. They've broken through on the south. Um, they have bought some more land units to do uh, reinforcement. They should be able to come over. Uh, their militia units and the transports should be able to just park into the China Sea, and, and those units should be able to get over there this coming turn. Uh, it kind of depends on whether they should be able to get over one way or another, but um, whether or not they'll be effective is dependent upon the weather. China's goal here is to survive. They have some units coming in. They've got a unit coming in, I believe, yeah, next turn, uh, and then two more units coming in the turn after. I think they'll be able to hold pretty well, at least in the northern part of the line. Uh, those units are in mountains, they're across rivers. Um, I think Japan's going to be able to do some uh, do some pushing through in the south, but I think the north is going to be more of a stalemate. Also over here on this side of the map, I think uh, the Soviets are going to try to push into Iran, and they may be able to even bring over a unit from the west in the European map, and uh, possibly even upgrade them to a guard banner unit prior to the start of their war with Germany. And the U.S. The U.S. didn't really do anything. I think 
last turn. Uh, but they're going to start... They're really just going to be ramping up naval production here, and um, I need to start sending garrison units out to their islands in the Pacific. And with that, that is the end of the turn. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, if you've got comments, please leave them below. Um, I'm, I pointed out quite a few different rules issues that I know I made mistakes on throughout the video. It is very easy to forget little things here and there with this game, but I'm having a lot of fun. Um, so I apologize for the, the rules mistakes. Like I said with the reserves, I'm really just planning on leaving the mistakes in here for a few reasons. I'm just bound to make mistakes. So they're just going to probably keep happening, and, and I'm sorry about that. Uh, the second reason is I'm playing against myself, so I, I don't really care. As my opponent, it's fine. Uh, obviously, I'm trying to play by the rules, but if, if there's something here or there that I make a mistake on, every, everything's fine. And also, it might benefit somebody else. Uh, if they see me making a mistake and then correcting it, it might be something they would have made as well, and um, maybe it'll help. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I've never played this before, so I'm sure I'm not following all of the right strategy here. Um, I, and part of this is a, is for me to see if I can figure that out as I go and just get it on camera because it might be interesting to other people. So again, thanks for watching, and I will see you for the November-December turn of 1939 in the next video.